Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're live here. Silicon Angle's coverage of VMworld 2012. We're here with our good friend Jason Buffington, uh, a multi-time CUBE guest. Jason, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks Always for having a me. Pleasure to see you. We love your insights. Uh, ESG, you guys are doing a great job. Um, really growing like crazy. Every time I, I, I see you know, somebody from ESG, you got more guys there, more research. <laughs> you guys are pumping it out like crazy. It's, it's fantastic, so congratulations on that. Thanks. We're here at the, uh, the spotlight on, on VMware Backup and Recovery, an area that you know well. Well, first of all, what's your take on the event here? Um, you know, what, do you, what do you see, what's interesting, and you know, particularly from a, from a data protection standpoint? So, uh, so this is actually my first VMworld. Uh, I, I've been to all the other events this season, but this was actually my first time to come to VMworld, and it's a pretty neat event. Yeah, um, I've had show, a really good it? time. It is, yeah. uh, it is. Um, certainly, I think uh, my favorite announcement of the day was uh, with vSphere 5.1 and the introduction of uh, uh, VDP, the data protector product that's now built in. Um, that's a really big deal. And, uh, and I'm surprised that, in fact, the only time they saw it on the keynote part was when uh, we were doing the, uh, the Demo Palooza competitions. Um, and Chad nailed it um, from a demo perspective, but uh, um, there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's always been a challenge, as you know, of, of VMware data protection. I mean, I always you know, go back to the days of, of VCB, and oh, then yeah. finally VADP had got the ecosystem to, to solve that problem. And, and VDR, you know, it was, a, it was a good effort, but really just didn't get there, so I think it, Finally, I mean, Chad was on the cube talking about the efforts, and, and Stephen Manley and Guy Churchill, uh, Churchill as well, talking about 60 engineers. It was not a trivial task. No. You know, but, so what do you make of that? I mean, so now it's embedded. It's a, it's it's free. So it's going to yep. potentially eat into some of the high end. Yeah. But yep. that's um, a bold move. Uh, yeah. What do you make of it? Um, so a couple things. So um, I liked how you set that up. There's, uh, you know, we had VCB, that 1.0, that just min bar. Let's get something in the box so you can back it up. And you know, coming back from my old history, I know that when you develop a platform, if you're going to put all your eggs in a basket and you can't protect the basket, no one's buying it. So VCB had to be out in there out of the box, but it was days that we like to forget, right? And then, then there's VDR, but, and with a lot of things in technology, it really takes to about a 3.0 kind of perspective before you really kind of get it right. Um, and VDP looks like it's going to do it right. It was not a trivial effort, right? I, I think the thing which, which was really interesting to me is, you know, typically when you look at a built-in something into a platform, the built-in's kind of wimpy, and you know, you're going to have to still do something else for it's almost neutered, everybody. right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so th this is built on Avamar code, right? So this is not untested. This is not, you know, immature stuff. This is built by a product that knows how to back up a virtualized environment. That's mm -hmm. step number one. And then certainly, you know, we did some research uh, earlier this year, and, and I'm hoping we get a chance to kind of talk about that a little bit more, but one of the big trends that we saw there was dedupe is a must. Um, uh, backup to disk without dedupe is non-viable, particularly um, when you're talking about virtualized environments. And so the fact that dedupe is in there, um, that you still have granular um, file level recovery, I mean, this is not a wholly neutered thing. It, it's, it's certainly not Avamar for free, right? There's, there's certainly some, some, uh, some scoping issues there. So, uh, so for example, it's a low-end solution. It's for SMB. Yeah, yeah, but for the SMB market, this is a big deal. Yeah, you know, um, and uh, and you very rightly mentioned that uh, that for the virtualization specific backup vendors that are out there that have been selling to that low end of the market, um, some of their some of their low-hanging fruit just went away. Yeah. So I want to get into the study. So uh, I want to pick up on something you said. Uh, you said data deduplication is a must. Does your research talk to what percent of the base is using and adopting data deduplication? Yeah, so between, the, between those that are using and those that plan to use within 12 to 24 months, it's like 80 some odd percent. Um, and I got to tell you, um, if you have me on the cube this time next year, that other 20%, that number's got to be lower. Um, those people just haven't done the math yet. Um, so dedupe is absolutely a must across the board. Um, uh, when, when we did the research, so the project was actually called Data Protection Modernization. And so what we did was we looked at about five different vectors for how people are looking at changing their current data protection strategies and why. Um, and, uh, and that included things like dedupe, it included um, better use of the hardware like for snapshotting and array-based replication, uh, included a big piece on how they're handling the virtualization scenario and then also what they were doing with cloud. And so on each of those vectors we looked at the what they were looking at, why, what they're doing now, why and why not. Um, and then where they were planning on going next. So a lot of really good, interesting stuff that came out of that. So what other findings did you, uh, did you have that stood out? So I think the one that probably stuck out to me the most was the non-stickiness of the status quo of backup. 
you know, you and I have been doing um, IT for a long time now, and for as long as I can remember, I, I've been doing backup for 22 years. And for as long as I can remember, backup was always like a religion, right? It was, uh, was kind of like, you know, one of those things, once you signed, or a political party, once you signed up for it, you were in for life with whatever that it's vendor was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, uh, um, about 50% of the respondent base for this last survey have had their primary backup solution, regardless of version, for three years or under. Really? Yeah, it's not like you know they've gone from V2 to V4 to V8 or whatever. Three years. That's under. amazing. So virtualization had to be a big catalyst for that change, right? It was. It, it forced a lot of people to reconsider their solution. The other part of of how non-sticky backup is, we actually asked folks if you could go from scorched earth and start everything over again. Only 32% of the of the respondents said they'd keep what they had. A third. Right? Um, it was like 18% said they'd go to the cloud and just under 50% said that they would go to a new solution. Backup is not sticky. And I think virtualization as well as just, you know, um, unfettered, um, unstructured data growth, um, those are the big drivers around, they're going to have to reconsider how they're doing stuff and they're trying to do smarter. Um, uh, with virtualization specifically, the big challenge is, ar is around VM sprawl. You know, um, one of the things we saw in the keynotes, we saw in a lot of demos this week is, um, VMware and the other hypervisors for that matter have really made it just too darn easy to stand up VMs. You know, sub one minute at a time, new VMs get stood up, and as soon as that happens, um, all of a sudden you're consuming gigs of storage. And oh, by the way, a lot of that is, is repetitive. The, the Windows OS in a thousand VMs still looks like the Windows OS. You, you just got a thousand back it up. <laughs> right, so, so it's forcing dedupe, it's forcing a different change. Uh, uh, for how people are looking at backup. And, uh, and so the status quo is not sticky, Dave. How did, Jason, how did cloud play in your study? So, so cloud is still certainly um, on the up and coming. So uh, uh, some basic math numbers on the two extremes. Tape is not dead, by the way. Tape is only in use in 56% of all environments. Cloud is in use in seven. Okay, now that includes, of course, some of the consumer angle that's out there, but, um, and specifically when we looked at cloud, we looked at a couple things. We saw that um, direct to cloud, or, or what I call a D to C, um, was 2% uh, of all environments. And then uh, disk to disk to cloud, which I think is my preferred model, is at 5%, about two and a half times the adoption rate. And that makes sense, because I mean, if you look at environments of any size at all, they're going to want that fast recovery capability, or more importantly, um, in fact, ESG is going to do a study later on this year. We're going to look at what I call BAS, DRAS, and tertiary. Um, backup as a service, DR as a service, because I think a lot of people mm -hmm. are going to skip right over BAS and go straight to DRAS. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, cloud tertiary, meaning let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's not get rid of that on-prem solution that we've made an investment in that's working well for us. But we still want to have the economics of cloud for that, for that off-site copy. So let's use what we've got and take it to a cloud as a third, uh, as a third instance of that data. So, um, so D to D to C comes in around 5% of the market. So you said earlier, tape is not dead. Okay, tape is not you dead. See that. Uh, there are some customers that have gotten rid of tape, but many, many have kept it as a last resort. Sure. You saw the Amazon Glacier announcement, uh, I guess it was last week, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I guess, kind of aimed at those holdouts on tape. What do you make of Glacier? Um, so I haven't gotten to put my hands on, on bits. I haven't gotten to see a demo on it yet. So, so I'll, I'll hold off on Glacier specifically, but, but here's what I want people to understand. Um, it, it's, it's, it's never really been around tape is dead. That's just one of those exaggerated things that kind of kicks off You're a fun marketing conversation. Marketing from disguise. It is, <laughs> it, yeah, and disguise like that comment. <laughs> but the point is, is that tape is also, um, let me say it this way, I think tape is dead as a preferred recovery medium. As the period. primary recovery right. medium. It, it, is, is, it is not what you should it, be pulling data back from. It's a from. mistake to, to make tape a primary recovery medium, is yeah. what you're saying. That's yeah. your advice to customers there. I mean, if you're on tape, get off tape as a Absolutely. primary recovery medium. Yeah, okay. if you want to use tape as a tertiary copy or cloud as a tertiary copy or, or, or tertiary disk, that's great. But really, our, our data shows it's around 78% of all environments. Disk is the primary means of recovery, and then it goes someplace else as that tertiary, and I think that's the right thing to do. Right, okay, and, and so, Let's talk about um, some futures here. Um, okay. you've, you've, you've had a chance to talk to some of the, the practitioners here, see some of the demos, yep. listen to the, the keynotes. What do you see the future holding for VMware Backup? So the, the thing that, that was most interesting to me, is so I've, I've been spending a lot of time, um, once I saw what VDP was, and I got excited about that, but I spent most of my time looking at private cloud. And when you look at private cloud, I think one of the things that's still kind of a gap when it comes to data protection as it relates to private cloud is there's a lot of ideas where basically the private cloud architecture says if we build it, someone else will back it up. 
And, and there's a couple different approaches to it. You know, some folks just use a brute force method of saying, oh, you launched VMs, I'll back those all up the same way, which I think is messy, right? Um, or you can just stand up VMs where there's agents inside, and I think that's not scalable. Um, or, and, and this is the one that pet peeves me the most, is you go to this really elegant self-service portal, you bring up this private cloud thing, you launch this new service, and then you shut down that pane of glass and you open up something different and say, now I'm going to go choose how to back it up. And there's just a gap there, right? One of the things that really impressed me about what I saw with, with, uh, with VMware this week is um, with that suite portfolio and seeing how they're really trying to look at the private cloud management stack, um, I think there's a lot more opportunity for them to say, look, this is gold, silver, bronze as far as how something gets stood up. And that means, okay, so what does gold, silver, bronze imply from a data protection perspective? Maybe gold is protected every 10 minutes and retain it for seven years. Bronze is protect it once a day, retain it for 30 days. You know? So I like that idea of um, letting the private cloud architecture decide uh, the retention and the RPO, the RTO, the SLA, I want that to be an aspect of how private cloud launches. Um, I think the thing that was missing from that was how does the private cloud architecture then go talk to that myriad of backup vendors and tell them, hey, I just got this new service, I just launched it, this is how you need to back it up. That glue is missing. Um, some of the things that we saw during the briefings this week around uh, what, the, uh, what the management stack looks like um, for vCloud Director, uh, what, I, what I think I'm seeing there is with, between that and what we see in VDP, there's some good potential where now that private cloud stack will know enough to at least tell VDP how to back it up and provide some constructs so the other guys can come on board as well. So that's encouraging to me. So you're basically putting forth a vision of data protection as a service. It's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm customer decides, or maybe it's based, based on application, sure. the SLAs decides what kind of protection I want. Mm -hmm. um, do you also see snapshotting increasingly coming into the picture? I absolutely do see snapshotting, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to twist one word that you used earlier. I don't think of data protection as a service. I want to see data protection as an attribute of a private uh, cloud offering. So that whenever you define a service, quality of service of that, of that uh, whatever gets instantiated, the data embedded. protection aspects yeah. are just an aspect of that. Mm -hmm. And I think five years down the road, we'll start seeing how primary storage has that same effect and where you'll simply see RPO, RTO, recoverable points in time, availability, all just being aspects or attributes of the primary store. But until then, at least so it comes So you communicate off the with the private cloud service in those terms, yep. let's call those business terms, and yep. that sets the SLA for the backup. Exactly. Yeah, great. Exactly. But, but let's talk about snapshotting for a second. You know, one of the things that we saw in the data protection research was um, one of the reasons why I think what, that the status quo is not sticky. Um, we saw that 86% of all backups are completing successfully, which isn't great, um, but, but it's better than half. Yeah. Which it was a few years ago, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's not great, but you know, it, it's respectable for most environments. Here's the one that bothers me though. 80% of recoveries complete within their RPO, RTO, SLAs. Yeah. See, so let's unpack that for a second. It's not 80% of recoveries, because that'd be a technology problem. What, what we measured was RPO, RTO, SLA. So after the IT guy sat down with the application stakeholder and said, okay, this is how fast it works, and this is what my team can do, and they negotiate out the SLA on that, even after that, they're only making the mark 80% of the time. That's a problem. Mm. And I think when you look at that kind of, how can I recover it faster and where my limits are, um, I think the only way you get better than using traditional backup and recovery to get you better than 86% backup, to get you better than 80% restores, is to start being smarter about how you use the hardware in conjunction with traditional backup. And so I think that's where not only snapshotting comes into play, but also array-based replication as well. So missing RTO, are they also missing RPO? They are. Yeah. So, so against, against the entire SLA. So that's really problematic. It is. Yeah. One out of five times, yeah, they're failing their that's SLA. That's unacceptable. It is that's unacceptable. An industry. And, yeah. and that's why I think um, the uh, uh, snapshotting is part of that. And in fact, we looked at how folks were doing that, and about 55% of the respondent base said they were planning on integrating either snapshotting, replication, or both. Um, in conjunction with their traditional backup and, re and recovery mechanism. So this is a hardware plus software, better together story. So that's like a great piece of research. How can people get access to it, get more information? So uh, my blog's the best place. So technicaloptimist.com, obviously all one word. Uh, that's my blog and you'll see all my write-ups from VMworld this week. Um, I'll have a link to this video before uh, the end of the week, hopefully. Oh yes, absolutely, it'll be up on uh, YouTube within, within hours. Uh, and uh, our man Art Lindsay will 
<laughs> he's, he's a machine, so. <laughs> well, the, uh, the report, uh, the link from that is also up there. And I'm going to be doing some podcasting of my own over the next couple of weeks, trying to uh, draw out some of the more interesting graphs and uh, sharing with the folks. Great. All right, Jason, hey, thanks very much. Really appreciate thanks the insights. Me. Always a pleasure. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This was the spotlight on VMware Backup Recovery live from VMworld 2012 SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage. We'll be right back to wrap it up after this.